Holly Randall Unfiltered is brought to you by our friends at Manscaped. Their Lawnmower 3.0 is a revolutionary electric trimmer that won't nick or snag your nuts. So go to manscaped.com, use code HRU for 20% off plus free shipping. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Today, I have Dante Cole. He is a crossover performer who is breaking boundaries. In fact, he is the very first crossover performer to win the coveted XBiz Performer of the Year, which is a big deal. We'll get more into that. Dante, thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for having me. I've been looking forward to this. That is so great. And and I'm so excited that you're here that I have a gift for you. So so but first before I give it to you, I need to ask you what your ball shaving game is like. So because of my fan base, they uh they kind of like me more hairy. So I kind of go like in these cycles of like once a month I'll just like kind of shave it all down and let it grow out and mm-hmm. then shave it down or whatever. So like I'll take a what do you call it? Like a like a hair trimmer that I shave my beard and my hair with. <gasps> and then I just shave my pubic region as well. You use the same trimmer for your hair and your beard that you do for your nether regions? Mm, well, no <laughs> longer, sir, because I am gifting you the Manscaped 4.0. I've heard about these. Are we on the wide angle, Ernie? <laughs> Fabulous. It is the revolutionary body electric trimmer with proprietary skin safe technology that won't Nick or snag your precious family jewels. Hell yeah. Thank you so much. You this are like, so welcome. This is very futuristic looking. It is. And it's <laughs> actually honestly really nice. And like all like showmanship aside, it's waterproof and battery operated. So you can shave, you can do it in the shower. It has a light on it too. And it also has like a travel safety lock. So like if you're traveling. Travel safety lock. Yeah. Cause you don't want this to accidentally go off in your oh, bag. Oh, I thought you meant like, so no one can steal it. I was like, what? <laughs> this is super cool i will uh definitely be using it next month because i just trimmed this morning oh fantastic (laughs) and um for those of you who want to try out the new manscaped 4.0 you can use code hru for 20 percent off plus free shipping so what have you heard about these things because like i've heard like just like social media reviews and mm-hmm. I just didn't know if those were just like you know fake hype but like uh, from everything I've heard they're like really good I don't know if you've heard so um my husband has one um so you have personal experience personal experience uh so yeah no they they work really great I also I, I don't know how much of a selling point this is but I kind of feel like it is um my dog had like really bad mats by her ear and I like you know wanted to make sure that I used a trimmer that like wasn't going to accidentally cut her or like aggravate her. So I used Manscaped to get the, the mats around her ears and it worked perfectly. That's awesome. So, um, well, and you for that. you're welcome. And everybody that I know who's, who's purchased one with code HRU for 20% off plus free shipping, um, has told me that it's great. So there's my sales pitch. <laughs> now we're going to actually talk to our guest. Um, Dante. So I was talking to Joanna Angel a couple of days ago, and she told me that Dante Cole is the best thing that's ever happened to the adult industry. Why did she say that? I uh, I don't know, to be honest. I mean, I just, I've worked with her a few times, and we've always had a good time with each other, and uh, I feel like we connect pretty well. Uh, she's directed me a few times, and I really click with her as far as uh on a directing level uh like her directing me Mm -hmm. Uh, i just love her style of how she does everything so um i just think that we click very well and we're friends and it's just i i I don't know i i really appreciate her as a director she's one of my favorite people in the industry she's so much fun she's so much fun we love joanna i'm actually having her on uh the next episode will be joanna and casey kisses on to talk about their new movie casey i believe it's called yeah yeah in that movie i played casey when she was a boy Oh, perfect. 
oh my gosh, so this is all like coming full circle. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay, well, we're going to leave it until next episode to actually talk about the movie because that's basically why they're coming on. Um, but let's talk about you. So you are what is known in the industry, industry jargon, as a, a crossover performer, which means you do straight and gay scenes. Um, and in trans too, I guess, would also be in there. So as somebody who's been in the adult industry for an incredibly long time, that's me, because I'm old, um, I will say that like I've watched this incredible shift in the landscape in terms of like straight porn and gay porn and trans porn and people starting to actually like work with each other. There was a huge divide before. Mm -hmm. In fact, you know, a few years ago, if you were a guy who, you know, had also done like gay or bi scenes and then you were trying to do straight scenes, like so many girls would blacklist you. Like mm -hmm. so many girls would not work with you. It was like a huge taboo, a huge no, no. And we're seeing that change so much just in the last few years. So how long have you been in the industry and have you seen a shift in that as well? So I've been in the industry for about eight years now. Uh, but the first four years were like very in inconsistent, uh, I mean, in that time frame, I only got like 30 scenes done. So because mm -hmm. I was also in the military during that point. So there was just like it was just whatever. But then like after that, um, it was kind of like a slow crawl. But then like I started taking it seriously, turned it into a career. And uh, so the real basis I have off of that is like just these past four or so years. Um, so in that time frame, I have seen a change because I think that's like right when like things really started to change. So I've like I've just watched the evolution of it and I've had friends and people I know that have like lived through that experience personally, you know, like Wolf Hudson and Lance Hart. And um, they have told me like stories about how hard it is and how much hate they used to get. And then, you know, you got all these like other uh, straight male performers that would like um, just like completely uh, like uh bury their past like pretend like they never did it and then people will be like hey but this is you and it's like no that's not me that's like yeah. my twin brother or some shit like yeah, that yeah, and it's yeah. just like just just to hide that and it's like it's sad that that's what that came to whether it is uh that was necessary or if it was just like um insecurities whatever i mean i i, I get it i guess but it's just like it sucks but um yeah, I mean, I'm just really fortunate to have been in that because, like, I never understood why that was a thing. Like, I understand, like, if you if you don't want to work with somebody, then it's fine. But, like, if you don't want to work with them because of reasons that are not valid, you know, like, such as, um, you know, like, I think the biggest thing that everyone, like, knows or, like, talks about is, uh, like, uh, you know, HIV scare, right? Because they uh, there's, like, rumors on that are on the gay side that, you know, they don't test as much or, like, as safely. But it's just the same thing as the straight side. You know, you've got some studios that require some testing and they're, like, very strict about it. Um, and then you got some studios that don't really give a fuck. You know, and then they'll just be, like, you know, like, oh, yeah, you know, let's do that. So it's, like, the same thing. But generally on the gay side, the testing is incredibly more strict. Like, uh, you have to do a full panel test for most studios the day before the scene. Oh, wow. And this has been like this for years. So because in the straight industry, we're like two weeks. Yeah. I mean, some performers can request an earlier shoot uh, testing date, like a smaller shoot window. But that's pretty uncommon. Yeah. It's usually a two week window. And it's because of that stigma that like the gay industry felt that it was necessary to, you know, like mm -hmm. do better, even though like it's, it's I, I don't, I've got my own opinions on it, but it doesn't really matter. Um, so I just never really understood what the reason was that like, why couldn't I just do straight porn too? You know, like mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense. And so I kind of like really started pushing for that and, you know, made myself like a, as best performance I could be like as reliable, responsible, like on time, um, you know, professional, uh, kind, whatever, but, like decent to be around, you know? Um, cause like if I, if, cause I was like, if I ever want to do straight porn, then it's like, any reason I give a director or a performer to not want to work with me, that's all that they need. And so right. I was just like, don't give them the opportunity and just like right. try to just keep pushing, pushing for it. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's worked. So the past two years, really just this past year has been like crazy. Like I'm doing most, most of my work is just straight port now. So I'm really, really, really happy about it. Yeah. I mean, I can tell you from personal experience, it, it definitely was so different. I mean, I can, I can speak specifically. So Christian triple X, I don't even know who he is. So we used to shoot him quite a bit. My mom loved him. It was back when my mom was shooting. And I cannot tell you how many times that we would book him 
and another girl and she would find out that he like was doing trans stuff had done i don't even think he was shooting gay porn at the time but like he had done it um they would cancel and they'd be like i'm not working with him and then we'd have to replace him and it was like this weird thing where you know <laughs> it sucks because i really like the guy and he was mm. a great performer i have to call me like look she canceled he's like why i'm like well, i have to replace you because of this and, and then he'd be like and they'd be like well you know did you tell her? It's like, do you tell them? Because obviously you want to be open about it, right? You you never want to like be sneaky or hiding yeah. anything, but it's like, do you like, why is it important that you have to tell them that if they have a clean test? Um, but like we did, because I didn't feel uncomfortable. I didn't feel comfortable not disclosing the full truth because it was such an issue. I think like at this point it's different now. Um, I don't think like if I booked you with a girl, I would feel like I needed to say, like, by the way, or maybe I don't know. Maybe I, I would. Some I mean, directors do still, but it's like I, like I don't get upset, but like I, mm -hmm. I do like to know like who these people are. So like I always like request like, hey, like who was that person? Just yeah. so I can like not like I don't do anything with that information. It's just like so I know like in the future, just in case like someone like books me with them and then be like, you're hey, like, hey, you that person's wanna, yeah, yeah they, totally they, they'd probably be canceled. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've gotten blacklisted by a few performers and it's just like, it sucks, yeah. but like, it, it doesn't like really bother me anymore because it's just like, you know, getting so far with this, like, it's not really a thing. No one really cares anymore. I just think that it, it just, the industry just needed someone to show that like you could do it and mm -hmm. that it wasn't actually going to be a problem. It's just like, you got to rip the bandaid off kind of and mm -hmm. just like be like, oh, okay, it's not that bad. And mm -hmm. then, you know, then everything can start to change. Like once you, it's like, um. I forget what that theory is called, but um, the, uh, have you heard the thing about the four minute mile? Mm. Like for ever, everyone thought the four minute mile, like running a four minute mile was humanly impossible. Mm -hmm. So, but along the line at some point, like a couple like years ago, the, some guy actually ran a four minute mile. And so like once they, people figured out that, oh, this is possible. Now like high schoolers, like fast high schoolers can run a four minute mile. So, so it's just, I think it's like the same thing that's just yeah. like once someone shows that it's possible, then it's kind of like, you know. Yeah. 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 That's a good analogy. Um, yeah. So, so actually tell us, um, well, before we go into like your past and how you get into it. So, you know, talking about you being this kind of breakthrough crossover performer, um, it, wouldn't it be so like nice that we wouldn't have to use that term one day? You know what I mean? Like you could just be a performer, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I see the value of it, but it's like, that's, again, not something that's ever bothered me. Like, mm -hmm. for example, like, like, I understand that people have value, like, with gender and stuff like that, with their labels, like, you know, like, that's good that you have that mm -hmm. importance. But, like, for me, like, labels never really, it, right. in whatever sense, doesn't really fucking matter. So it's like, like, because, like, for example, some people get offended by the term crossover, but I'm like, I don't get why, but it's just like, yeah. But I'm just like, yeah, come wherever the fuck you want. <laughs> but it's, it's like sometimes like you do like need to like specify certain things in life. And so it just makes it easier just by naming it something. But yeah, yeah, I think also because, you you know, like you are kind of at this forefront of like this the changes in the way that we look at sexuality and the way that we look at like gender roles and gender fluidity and all of that in the adult industry um, and, and at the world at large, you know, like the entire all of societies kind of, you know, battling with like you know, gender roles and what that means for people and, yeah. and sexuality and, and what that means. And like, you know, I think men, especially, you know, and 96% of my um, audience are men. And I think that a lot of them, well, I know that a lot of them, you know, have said like, I can't imagine like ever, you know, it's like, well, if you have sex with guys then like you're gay and that's it. And you're really gay and you're only having sex with women to like kind of, not appear too gay, but really ultimately you like you prefer men. Yeah. Um, but I've read that you actually tend to like gravitate towards women um, romantically. True. Yes. True. And before you did your very first gay scene, um, you had never been with a guy before. You'd only been with women. Correct. I never even kissed the guy before. Yeah. So, so like, just so, right <laughs> so, so many guys would be like, how would that be possible? Like, how could you have sex with a man and like, keep your dick hard if you're not like gay so how do you respond to that uh i've never really had to respond to it but like i i, I don't i have a problem with like speaking a lot with analogies because that's how i understand shit but mm -hmm. it's like i get the perspective of that um because it's like people or like tend to not like 
like think things are possible that are like that they personally don't think like if I think like this, then clearly nobody else thinks like or no, every, then everybody else thinks like yeah. this. So it's just kind of like that. So it's just like, you know, like, for example, like girls, like you see uh, like a girl like, you know, kisses another girl or like does in whatever degree of sexuality of whatever with another girl. And then they are still, they still got boyfriend, whatever. Guys would be like, oh, yeah, that's hot. Or yeah. It's like the, there is not even a question that they're gay or right. maybe even bi. It's just like, they're just like, oh, yeah, they're just having fun and that's hot or whatever. But it's just like, so you, you have the understanding for women, right? So, like, why, like, why couldn't, God, why couldn't a guy be like the same way? I mean, we're, I mean, we're, women and men are pretty different, but not like all that different, you know? Yeah. I think that. I think a lot of it just has to do with like the standards of masculinity that we hold up. You very, know? True, very true. And I think so many men are afraid of being deemed unmasculine or, you know, in any way, not this kind of like alpha creature that like we of society have told young boys since, you know, a very young age about like, you need to be a man. I actually had um, a sex coach, Nicole Emma on, um, two weeks well when this episode comes out it'll be two weeks ago and she talked about like the pressures that we put on men from a very young age and she talked about like you know phrases that we use like man up don't be a sissy take it Mm -hmm. like a man like all of this these signals that you send kids from a very young age of like this is what it means to be a man and any deviation from that was like an affront to your gender yeah whereas with women like you know oh it's like i had sex with someone in college it was experimental like that's fine but it's like if a guy did that it's like Oh, that then that defines you eternally yeah. as this one thing. You are gay. You and are gay. Anything that you do after this is just trying to cover that up. Or yeah, whatever. yeah, exactly. I mean, do you think? And then there's also like this. You know, some people float around the theory that like everybody's a little bit bisexual or pansexual. Do you think that like maybe every guy's just like a little bit bisexual, I th- and they just like have been trained to like never think about or explore that side of them? I think so. I mean, cause I've always viewed sexuality as a spectrum, just like with most things in life, you know, this there's, it's not like black and white. It's very much just like, kind of like, you don't have to be completely one way or another. There's like, I would say pretty much everybody to some extent is somewhere, you know, like along the line, not right. like, and, but just exactly like what you said, like, um, most people, men specifically, are like force themselves to think that like, uh, like you have to be like completely one way, or if you're not, then you are on the other side or some shit like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I believe it's a it's a spectrum. But like like for example, like guys that would consider themselves straight, I'm sure that they are like pretty much all the way over here, but not like at the very tip of it. You know, I'm, mm-hmm. they just wouldn't allow themselves to think that they could be just like a little bit over. You know? Yeah. Um, and that might kind of explain the um, appeal of like trans content because it's like, yeah. well, it's not, you know, it's like half and half. So like I can, you know, like that, <laughs> I can kind of accept that. Like because trans um, performers, their audience are men, mm-hmm. you know, so it's kind of interesting. Yeah, it's like it's a little bit of both, and it's like I don't know, maybe they represent like this bridge that we can cross to, you know, consider other sexual preferences. And it's funny because like uh, a when I upload videos to Pornhub, like when I do, uh, like buy videos or, uh, pretty much any kind of video, except for if it's like completely gay, I'll upload it as a straight video Mm -hmm. and then just kind of like, it's shitty, but like, wait for the hate to roll in. Well, no, just like trick people into like watching something. And then like those videos get the most views out of anything I post. And so it's just like, it's people, but it's what my idea is like, is put the exposure out there, maybe show people something that they may not know that they like. And when they see it, it's just like, you know, they take out of it what they want, you know, maybe they like it more than they would think, but now like that just sparks something, you know, maybe like, maybe they totally hate it. That's fine. Go, go on to the next video. No one's going to judge you for it. But like, maybe like that just kind of starts something up. And that's like, I believe what sexuality is. You just need that one opportunity to think that like, oh, maybe there's more to me than just what I thought for X amount of years. Yeah. I mean, data doesn't lie. It's interesting that you say that because I actually interviewed Natasha Dreams a couple of weeks ago and we were talking about how she was in um, Jessica Drake's movie Carnival, Mm. which is a Wicked Pictures production, which, you know, um, has always been the kind of standard of like couples porn and like storylines and very, very straight, you know, very much geared towards like 
straight men and, and couples and women and how she put this trans scene in there without like really make it wasn't like without labeling it like a trans DVD or like a trans movie. And, and she said it was specifically for the reasons that you just said she wanted to put something in there that people may not normally, you know, the people, her viewers may not normally seek out trans content because, you know, the fear of, of, of looking for that kind of thing, or just never even considering that it's something that they might like. Mm -hmm. And then they see that scene in it, what they thought was like a mainstream straight movie. And then they're like, actually, that's pretty hot. Actually, I kind of like that. Like, but they would have never been introduced to that material if they hadn't, if it hadn't been like snuck into that DVD, you know what I mean? So it sounds like it's the same thing that you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. I mean, I don't know. I think that people need to like open up to sexuality more. I mean, like accept what you are. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's what people like you are here to teach us. Try my best. (laughs) (laughs) So um, let's talk about uh, how you got into porn in the first place. Uh, So, do you remember that site, Backpage? I sure do, so, which no longer exists, nope. thanks to Sesta Fosta. Uh, for those of you out there who don't know, it's basically exactly like Craigslist, but the only difference was they had a little uh, adult section in there. Uh, so as an 18-year-old, I was like scrolling through that, and I was just like saw adult shops, and I was just like, oh, that's kind of like, let's see what that's about. And then I saw an ad for like a... Uh, looking for young adult, uh, looking, yeah, looking for young adult males for adult films. And, um, it was advertised as a straight thing. And, uh, I looked into it and, uh, applied and then it turned out it was for a gay studio, but they were like, they would offer a straight scene and a solo scene. And then if you wanted to do, uh, a gay scene after that, then you could, but they probably wouldn't have you back if you only just did a straight scene. You know, what's so interesting is that I have a lot of men who reach out to me who want to get into like straight porn, but say that they were told that they have to do gay porn before they can get into straight porn, which I, I always like wondered where that idea came from. But maybe Europe, I think maybe it came. Oh, really? Yeah, because I've heard that that's like a, I, a few people I know out in Europe like that. It's uh, a lot more common hmm. from what I've heard. At interesting. Least. Uh, def- definitely not in the U.S. I mean, as you know. Yeah, because yeah. I was like, I don't know where you would have heard that from, but maybe. Very counterproductive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But maybe um, s- stories like yours, maybe it stems from the whole like, oh, looking for young male talent. We can give you like two straight scenes, but like if you really want to keep working, we can give you like mm-hmm. other scenes, but they're gay. And I yeah, don't know, maybe, maybe people get pulled in thinking that they have to do that in order to work in mainstream. I don't know. Yeah, who knows? Just an idea that. <laughs> came to mind when you said that but sorry go on no uh but yeah that's really it um i did that for a little bit uh and then i was basically stuck with that studio for like four years because they had some weird contract thing it's like they lock you up basically oh contracts yeah they're so much fun yeah dumb 18 year olds you know they just they're (laughs) that's the best prey yeah uh so i was doing that for about four years and then i uh, uh finally was like yeah let me get the fuck out of here because mm-hmm. i feel like i want to experience like the rest of the industry mm-hmm. so yeah so who did you start work what was like the first scene that you did once you what was the studio that you were working for before corbin fisher okay yeah i've heard that and so then okay so you're done with corbin fisher so what's like the next scene that you go do uh it was this uh gay site called uh guys in sweatpants <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's just kind of like a little niche website but it's um a, it's ran by this guy, Austin Wilde, who's a like renowned gay performer mm-hmm. from like, um, you know, like, like the generation before me basically. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, he's a really cool dude. I uh, love him. And, uh, he, we did a few scenes together or for his site and mm-hmm. stuff. And then just kind of started branching out slowly from there. Mm-hmm. And then, so what was the first like straight scene that you did once you're kind of out on your own? Mm-hmm. You know what? I don't really remember. I think it, I want to say it was something for uh, Erica Lust. Okay. Because I, I I don't know if that was the first one or one of the first ones, at least. Mm-hmm. That was within the same time period. Yeah. Uh, so we did this movie for Erica Lust. And then, yeah, uh, I barely got any straight scenes from then. Um, yeah. But then it just like, you know, like I said, like around COVID time is when I really started to, you know, break out into well there i mean there's a lot of work in the gay industry right i mean i would assume it's it seems like it's it's very active 
Yeah, I mean, it's just as active as, like, the straight side. But, like, uh, uh, I think statistically gay takes about only 10% of the entire porn world altogether, mm, if I'm okay. not mistaken. Yeah. It's interesting because there's just, like, such a divide between the two industries. So, mm. like, I, like, even though I've been in the porn industry for, like, 23 years, I, like, don't know anything about the gay industry. They are very similar, but they're also very different. It's more, like, kind of, like, like family because it's well, like more like family oriented because it's so like so much smaller yeah so like pretty much everybody knows each other to an extent mm-hmm. um and like better you know so it's just like word spreads around like a lot quicker there's not as much drama there's not i mean there's you know, there's always going to be drama but yeah uh not as much uh it's kind of more laid back it's a lot more uh mechanical structured mm-hmm. uh, as far as like how the scenes go so it's um yeah a lot more safety precautions That's interesting that you say that. Um, And I wanted to touch on this before when when it came up. So this is a good opportunity. So you were saying that a lot of the gay studios require testing like the day before. Mm -hmm. So I had heard, um, and maybe this is from a while ago. And like I said, I heard, so I don't know, that there were definitely some studios that requested, required testing just like we do. And then there were other studios that if you used condoms, they didn't require testing. And then there were other studios that literally only hired HIV performers with other HIV performers. Is that true? That's true. Okay. Uh, So the condom situation that you mentioned, that's not really a thing anymore, um, at least from the studios that I shoot with. Right. Um, So it's like like the bigger studios. I mean, I I couldn't tell you what what some of the... Up, like smaller ones are doing but uh i mean there's only been like one studio that i know of that was doing that co- kind of like condom rule mm-hmm. uh but they don't do that anymore mm-hmm. um and then you know because like there are hiv positive performers that, you know are undetectable or whatever and it's just like uh it's very difficult for them to get work unfortunately but uh so there are studios that just pair up you know positive performers so there's nothing like Mm-hmm. So, the, so you know, they can still get work because, you know, just because you're positive doesn't mean you're not a fucking kick-ass performer, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's just like they need to be out there. They need to be working and doing stuff. So there's just like it's the easy way. It's just like, hey, you know, why don't you guys just work together? Yeah. So for those of you who aren't familiar with this, and actually you can go back and listen to my interview with Nick Fit, oh. um, who is a gay performer, who and we go into great detail about this. So when someone's considered undetectable who's HIV positive, they have a viral load that's so incredibly low that scientifically it's considered impossible to transmit the disease to another person. But of course, there's still a lot of stigma and fear around um, HIV. And so most people will not work with other HIV plus performers regardless of what their viral load is. And so that's what Dante's referring to when he says that. And if you want more information, um, you should go back and watch my interview with Nick Fit, where we, we talk about that in great detail. And he is very knowledgeable about all that stuff. He's a good friend of mine, and he uh, he's very straightforward, very honest, and he will tell you exactly how it is, so definitely. Yeah. It turns out he actually also um, like went to high school with my DP, which is super random. Oh, no shit. Yeah, really crazy. Um, so... Now, you've won um, Performer of the Year from Expos, which is like, you know, pretty much like the biggest award that, you know, you can get. Um, so how did that feel for you? Because you're the first crossover performer to win that. That was the first year that they did that award. Because uh, I guess like technically anybody could win that award, you know, whether mm-hmm. you know, it's like uh, cisgender, transgender, you know, whatever, mm-hmm. any, anything in between, no matter what porn you do. So it was, I think that's what it meant by all around. But um, it felt really good because I was not expecting that because I didn't even know that that award was a thing or being announced that night. And they, they made like a big deal about me like being on for that uh, that show. And they, they did like this pre-show and everything. And I was like, because I was like on my way to Hawaii or whatever. And like I was like in a t-shirt and they're like, they call me up and they're like, can you... Uh, do you have anything nicer? I'm like, I'm out of my suitcase right now. Please tell me you were in a Hawaiian t-shirt. No, I was just like, you know, like some, like, uh, I don't even remember, but, and then I was just like, I got a black V neck and he's like, put that on. <laughs> <laughs> um, so like, and then there was, I was, I was thinking that it was like going to be like gay performer of the year or whatever mm-hmm. through X biz. And then when that got announced and I was just like, it was, uh, Max Connor, I think I was just like, 
I was like, why the fuck did they make such a big deal? And then, like, it came all the way to the end. And then that got on. So I was like, holy fuck. Like, that's what this was all about. Like, I was like, so it went from, like, going, like, all the way down here to then, like, like, yeah. like the excitement. I was like, I was my fucking mind blown because I didn't think that that would have, you know, ever, like, really come to that. I, I don't know. Yeah. But it was, it was really, it felt really good. Yeah. But this past year was, like, fucking insane for me. And I was just, like. I say that this year was my peak because it will never be this good ever again because this, you don't know that. Well, so the, uh, this past year I got four performer of the years. And so I'm the only me and Michael Del Rey are the only people to get two performer of the years in different categories and in the entire industry ever. Right. So we got it in, um, uh, he got gay, we got gay performer of the year together. And then we got, uh, trans male performer of the year like in separate years and then um but then this year i also got uh what was it straight male performer of the year and then uh yeah then the expos so i got four performer of the years in a single year and so i was like so not only like the first person to ever get two but like four in the same year i was just like holy fuck like it's never gonna get better than this like i might as well just enjoy it while it's here <laughs> <laughs> um so i was just like really fucking excited about that and i was just like and I, I, I just it, it feels really good just to kind of like be at that point. Yeah, that's amazing. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back. Scott Bush, you definitely do if you haven't started using the products from my sponsor, Manscaped. Since I've started working with Manscaped, they've really expanded on their product line. It's incredible. So, of course, we've got the Lawnmower 3.0, their revolutionary electric body trimmer, which is not only cordless, but it's also waterproof, so you can actually use it in the shower. They also have the Crop Preserver and the Crop Reviver, a ball deodorant and a ball toner to keep your balls smelling nice and fresh. And if you get their perfect package, you will not only get the aforementioned ball toner and ball deodorant, but you will also get, of course, the electric trimmer, a shed travel bag, and their boxer briefs, which are the most comfortable boxer briefs you will ever wear. You can get all of this for 20% off at manscaped.com by using my code HRU. That's 20% off at manscaped.com by using my code HRU. All right, guys, we're back. So Dante, um, tell us a little bit about the challenges of being a male performer. Forget like being gay, forget like mainstream, straight, like trans, whatever. Just being a male performer in general is, is difficult. It's one of the most demanding jobs in porn. You have to keep your penis hard for long pe periods of time. You have to be able to like come on command. You have to be able to perform under like crazy conditions. And, you know, I get so many guys hitting me up all the time. You probably get this too. I want to work in porn. I want to be a male performer. And I think so many people underestimate what it takes to be successful at this. So being somebody who's obviously quite successful at this, do you have like a specific routine that you do to like before you do a scene? Because I know that other performers I've interviewed, um, like Charles Dara has like a whole like morning routine that he does, like including breathing exercises, like no <laughs> caffeine, like he's very like disciplined. Um, do you have anything like that? Or you just like walk in there and like just wing it? Um, so before I go into that, I, I will definitely say that there is, there's skill involved for sure. But the, there's like knowledge about like how your body works and stuff. But then there's also just like genetics. Like there's just things that you are born with that really no amount of like practice or training can help you with. And it's just like you're given what you got. And that's kind of like going into this. And so I feel like that is a big part of it. Um, so you're, you're natural, basically. I, I hit the genetic jackpot as far as porn is concerned. Yeah. Um, just because like I... Uh, I could get hard and stay hard very easily. Um, and like, again, there's, there's nothing that like I practice or when like good how, at. how easily, uh, like, could you get hard right now? I could get hard right now. Really? Yeah, oh, yeah. You could like do it right now. Yeah. Are you hard yet? Oh, I didn't know. I was right. like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, but, uh, the, so it's like, there's like no really amount of training that you can do that. I mean, there's like mental calmness and stuff like that, but yeah. some people you just like, it takes more to get to that point. So mm -hmm. it's like, 
like I just I got very lucky, so I'm not like like a skilled person or whatever when it comes mm-hmm. to that. But uh, then it comes to coming too. Like um, I can if I'm jerking off, I can come in like sixty seconds if I wanted to. When I'm fucking someone that I'm like really interested in, like there's like I'm just like that. Like then there's nothing I can do about it either. Mm-hmm. But fortunately, um, I'm able to come multiple times. Um, I'm, yeah, so I'm able to come like multiple times in a row. So it's just like when I. Uh, even though I may come right away, it's just like I can still keep going. So mm-hmm. it's just like I don't know. How but old are you? I'm 27. Okay. Um, but I don't have any routines. I don't have anything. The only thing that I do, um, you know, I just I just make sure I feel good in the morning. So whether that be like working out or like eating, you know, I eat like really really clean. Uh, so that I think probably helps a lot. Um, but. I mean, for scenes, I do take Viagra a lot, uh, not all the time, but a lot of the time just because, like, I want to make sure that it's just, like, the scene goes well and, like, there's just, like, you know, there's no stopping for in between, like, parts, like, where I, like, need to stop and get hard because, like, you know, if, like, if at any point that, like, a guy needs to stop and get hard, you know, there's so much shit that can happen between now and then, like, resetting up, doing all this, like, people fucking off, going somewhere else, and then all of a sudden you just turn, like, what could have been a 30 minute window into like two hours, you know, mm-hmm. like, I mean, you know how that works. Oh, I do. So it's just, um, I want to like, I'm do whatever I can to make sure that that window stays like as short as short as possible. Cause everyone just wants to get out at the end of the day. You know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, as Mike, or as our friend, Mike Quasar, <laughs> who you're going to go shoot a scene with, uh, after this would say, I just want to go home. Yeah. And I've, as much as I hate to say, I feel like in this past like couple of months, I've slowly been becoming him. And I'm just like, I hate that. Cause I, I love what I do. I, I love this job. It's the best fucking thing ever. But like, there's just been like so many things that like come up that I'm just like, man, this is so like inefficient. Like, just come on, like, let's just go. And I'm just like, I just want to go home. Well, like, I'm having fun. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, there's a difference between like being there and being committed to the job and, and, and wanting to do your best. And, and then there's like working with inefficient crews and idiot directors. Um, right. Yeah, it's so frustrating when people don't like plan a day efficiently and they like waste all this time. Like that's my fucking pet peeve. And and I'm lucky enough that like I get to produce all my own stuff. Mm. And so I manage the call sheets. I'm always like very conscious of people's time and I really try to especially if I'm shooting a feature movie, like schedule things in a way where it's like the least amount of like back and forth and everything can be done the most efficiently. But some people aren't like that and they Mm. like don't plan in advance. And that's just like infuriating. And that was like, that's one of the biggest things I love about Joanna Angel and Mike. And when we did that uh, Casey movie that Mm -hmm. you're going to be talking about them soon with, um, that was the coolest fucking thing I've ever been on. Like that was my favorite project I've ever done by far. And for many reasons, but like the one thing was, is like, this was like a fuck, was it, like an 80 page script and we had six days to do it. And it was like very in-depth detail, like whatever. But, um, like the cast was like amazing, but the, uh, um, so like that definitely helped a lot, but what really made it was the planning, like what you're talking about. Like Joanna did like an immaculate job with planning. And then like, uh, her, teaming up with Mike as like the uh, like DP basically he like they were just like the power team and like we just busted through everything like they only got exactly what they needed and then didn't do all this extra shit like didn't like get like oh we need to give this shot and then this shot like we should do all that all over again just so we can get like all this and it's just like that was just like my favorite thing just because of like I saw how quickly like you can do something yeah. if you just do it like well, efficiently Mike is also like unmatched in his ability to be able to produce and shoot things quicker than anybody. Like, I don't know how the fuck he does it. We both used to shoot for Wicked. And I think like I moaned and complained about getting like an extra day or something than that, than he did to finish a movie. And like, he would still like, I would still take like so much longer to get like the same amount of stuff done than he did. And I considered myself to be pretty fucking efficient. But I think what, what Mike does is that he edits in his head while he's shooting because he's also an editor Mm -hmm. and because he's the one who's usually editing it. He knows exactly what he needs and he never shoots more than what he needs. Whereas I'm not the editor. So I'm always trying to give my editor like options. And so, you know, I probably overshoot some stuff, but I'd rather overshoot it and have the right footage than not. But like he's a machine the way that he does it. It's really quite amazing. 
is great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what's dating like for you? Do you find that dating is difficult now that you're like kind of this recognized adult performer? Do you find that people have issues with you being in the industry? Do you date outside of the industry ever? Do you only date within the industry? Do you do a little both? So I've never in my life been in like an actual relationship before. How old are you? 27. Oh my goodness. I, it's not something that like, I, I don't like it. I don't want to be single, but it's also like, um, I, uh, there's a lot that goes into it, but I, I, um, I just like, I'm very emotionally like drawn off from a lot of things. Like I'm not like, uh, I, I, I do show my emotions. I'm very like when I'm with, when I'm with someone that I'm like really into, like my emotions are like out there, you know, it's not mm-hmm. like I'm like, Oh yeah, I'm not, like hiding my emotions and shit, <laughs> but, um, it's, they're still just kind of like held up. And like, I, um, it's very hard for me to find someone that like I actually connect with. Um, and then the very, very few times that that's actually happened, like I think twice in my whole life, uh, it's just, it's worked, it didn't work out for other reasons. Um, so it's just like, I've never really been in an actual relationship, but I do when I, when I have like, when I'm like seeing someone for like a little bit, just like feeling, feeling the person out or whatever it is usually within the industry because it makes it so much easier just because it's like, you go into it with a easier understanding. And then there's just not this whole nother like layer of mm-hmm. work and like patience that you need to have, which I'm like willing to do if it's the right person, obviously, but it's just like, it, it I just generally find myself like looking within an easier pool of people to work with. So, yeah, I think it's hard for what we call civilians in a porno jargon, which means people who don't work in the adult industry who would, who could understand that, um, love and like romance can be separated from sex. Because Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people think if you're having sex with somebody, even if it's for work, that means there's a kind of emotional connection there that I'm threatened by. And, um, I think that, you know, those of us who've worked in the adult industry for a long time know for sure that that is not the case because we just like, this is a job and it is very yeah. much a job. Um, but I think people outside of the industry have a really hard time wrapping their head around that. So yeah, I, uh, most performers that I speak to say it's incredibly difficult to date outside of the industry and it's difficult to date in the industry too, because it's a very like ancestral kind of insular industry, yeah. you know? And then it's like, you never get away from work. I mean, like, uh, like there's the people that like I've been hanging out with, like recently, like we call it like the 13th grade, you know, like high school, you're a senior, it's the 12th grade. So it's like, you're still in high school when you're in porn because yeah, it's just like, so true. everybody knows each other. Word spreads around like in fucking five minutes when something happens, like you start talking to somebody, you get calls from a director's like that you barely talk to like, Hey, so you're dating this person now. And it's just like, well, and then there's like all this shit that happens. Out of it. It's like, how the fuck did you even find out? Yeah. But uh, I don't know. So it's just, yeah, there's a, their own complications that come within the industry. And uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think also too, like one of the 13th grade thing kind of makes me laugh because I was talking to Missy Martinez about this. And One of the problems with, um, you know, the power of social media, the incredible popularity of so many performers, all the eyeballs on them and the very young age that they usually are at getting into the industry is that like, um, you know, I did stupid fucking shit in high school and I did stupid shit in college and I was an idiot, you know, and I was immature. But I was not on this kind of world stage for everybody to see. I was not like, you know, um, I didn't have Twitter and Instagram and uh, camera phones to capture like all the dumb shit that I did. So I was able to do all of those things and kind of like in my own personal world, learn from it, grow up and then, you know, come into the Internet age that we're in now. And, you know, know that like you shouldn't post every single personal like meltdown maybe that you have on Twitter or like every beef that you have with somebody, but you know, these young people come in and they, they don't have like, like that is like their college years are like their first years in porn. And some of them become very famous very quickly. And you know, they have the, you know, they have social media at their disposal and they have like hundreds of thousands of people following them. And they're just like, they're kind of all of that plays out on this world stage, which just think can be really difficult yeah it's uh kind of like 
the cheesy phrase of with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. And and like, especially when you don't realize that, like, you do have more, like, essentially more power than you think. Yeah. Like, when you say something to, like, 500,000 people on Twitter, like. Yeah. And you can't erase that stuff. You know, you can delete. (laughs) You can. You can delete it. But, you know, it's still going to end up on, like, the real porn WikiLeaks the next yeah. day. <laughs> I mean, like, you can't escape it. I mean, you know, even now, people that, things that people have posted, like, 10 years ago, you know, sometimes come up and, like, cancel people's careers. I did, I, like, whenever that happens, I'm always like, did I put anything stupid on Twitter 10 years ago? Is it going to come back and fucking haunt me? Like, I don't even remember. But, yeah, it's, it's crazy. So um, I can see, like, so the 13th grade thing just, like, made so much sense to me. <laughs> Yeah, it's unfortunate, but, you know, it's the world we live in. Yeah. So if there was, um, you know, somebody maybe hadn't really heard of you before today, but they, they you're a good-looking dude, you sound like you're awesome, and they really want to go check out your scenes, where would you send them? Like, what are some of the scenes that you've done that you're the most proud of that you think people should look at? Uh, I mean, I would say, like, Pornhub, just because it's so much easier just to be like, hey, Go here and then just type my name in. And then, but you like, gotta have like specific scenes with like specific performers that like you thought were really great, right? Of course, definitely. And there's a few that I. It's one of those things that like when you're put on the spot to think of something, like you can't think of it. But it's like I know that I have those scenes, but I just I can't think of anything at the top of my head. Okay, what about like um, what you've shot in the last like two months? Uh, definitely that Casey movie, but it's not out yet. Um, well, if anything that I shot in the past two months isn't like out yet. Um, I, I well, okay, stop with this. I, I do really like my work on Deeper just because like I have fun with acting. I really enjoy it. Okay. Um, and there's just there's a lot of stuff on Deeper that has that. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, Any particular performers that you feel like you had really great chemistry with? Yeah. So there is uh, Daisy Taylor who's uh she's a ts performer uh she's one of my favorite people to work with she is awesome uh, i've also interviewed her for this show and we love her <laughs> she's great uh yeah she's one of my favorites um michael del rey and i uh we're pretty pretty close friends uh most of the stuff that him and i do together uh ends up doing really well so pretty much anything with him and i um let's see any like straight scenes? Because you've well, covered trans, you've covered gay. Well, anything on deeper is straight. Okay. Um, but I mean, sorry, I meant like straight performer. Like, oh, maybe. straight performers. Uh, yeah. God damn it, that's like another one. Why can't I fucking think of anybody? Uh, Joanna Angel for sure. Like, I mean, we we did some like weird stuff, but like, but like in a fun, like hot weird. But like, it's Joanna's like, great at like her fun hot weird. Oh, totally. Like, that's her thing for sure. Yeah, I mean it. All of that is great. Uh, I've done some stuff for uh, Misa X with Aiden Ashley. She is also one of my favorites. She's a fucking great killer performer. Uh, That's yeah, good. Yeah, two, two people is <laughs> yeah. perfect. You don't need to name any more. I know what you mean. I get that question a lot. Like, who are some of your favorite people to work with? I'm like, almost everybody. Like, you know, 90% of the people that I work with, I really enjoy. Um, so I understand. So sorry for putting you on the spot. No, it's all good. I just like, I'm just like, God, like, I feel so stupid. Cause like, I know I can, I know they're, that they're there, but I just can't think of it. Is there anyone that you haven't worked with that you really want to work with? Um, let's see. On the gay side, I pretty much worked with everybody that I wanted to work with. Cause it's just like, you just get Small passed around community. like super yeah. quickly. Um, I mean, there's all, I mean, when I, when I want to work with somebody, it's like somebody that I know. Cause mm-hmm. like, for me, it's like, a, like connection, like sex, like is like a lot is all about like personality, like connection based. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I kind of have to like know you to like, like want to work with you. Makes sense. Um, but fuck that. I literally just had someone, uh, I was thinking about the other day on the straight side, but I was just, just fucking blinking on it. 
I've also been having like a lot of neurological issues lately. Oh, uh, so okay. So like, my memory is also just fucking shot. So, oh my god. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Black mold poisoning and whatnot. Oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, let me think of some more questions where I can put you on the spot. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> what is the capital of Minnesota? Wait, is Minnesota Minnesota's a state or is that a city? It's a state. No, it's a city, isn't it? Minnesota's a state. It's a state. Wow. We're going to leave this in, Ernie, just to prove how dumb I am. <laughs> I'm so bad at geography. It's really weird. This is like a weird aside, but my husband's amazing at geography. Like he knows all the capitals to all the states and all Brilliant. the states. And his favorite thing to do is quiz me on geography because I f- fucking get it wrong <laughs> every single time. And he loves feeling superior to me. So, um, yeah, Minnesota is a state. Minnesota mm-hmm. state. Okay. The only reason why I know that is because I, I grew up, uh, a, a lot of growing up I did was in Wisconsin. Okay. So with their like, next to each other so. <laughs> okay so i picked a, i picked a good yeah. geography question for you <laughs> so um last question uh have you ever completely failed in the scene and if so how did you handle that there has never been a scene that needed to be like as we were filming, it needed to be stopped because of me. If that's failure, I mean, there's yeah, that's that's pretty much what I mean. Because almost every guy I've talked to has got like one scene that they had to just call. Yeah, no, there's never been that. I mean, there's been scenes where like I've definitely struggled. I mean, there that it, it happens for of sure. Uh, but it's like we always get through it. Um, I mean, yeah, there's there's definitely been scenes I've been on like where we had to cut for like other reasons, whether, mm-hmm. whether it was the other performer or just like shit just happens like a moratorium like there was the, <laughs> oh yes those are fun it? there was two more the i don't i don't think it was the last one but the two moratoriums that happened before that the, i was in both times literally in the middle of having sex when the people got the call and they're like hey you need to stop having sex right now the moratorium just got called and so we're just like you're fucking kidding me and like <laughs> it happened like twice in a row like what are the what are the odds yeah. So for those of you who don't know, a moratorium is called when somebody in the adult industry uh, tests for HIV, um, tests positive for HIV. And sometimes it's a false positive. This is actually not that uncommon. Um, but the way that our testing system works is that everybody gets tested every two weeks or sometimes the day before, like we just said. It all goes through the PASS system, which is a like a universal database that only people in the adult industry are allowed to access and it shows uh whether or not people have cleared all the std tests or not and so if somebody is tested and they come back hiv positive it goes into the past system and there's like a big alert that's called and then all adult production shuts down just to make sure that there's no um transmission among the other performers and this is basically how our testing system works and this is how we've prevented this spread of HIV. So um, even though it's a scary thing when it happens, it's like it is our testing system working, even though the mainstream media likes to say like HIV outbreak in porn. It's kind of like, well, not really, because also, too, sometimes it's people who aren't even working in the adult industry who test positive, like you'll have new yeah. performers come in. If I'm not mistaken, like the last one was like- The last uh, one was that, yeah, they th- somebody who wanted to work in the adult industry, but like hadn't yet, but of course had to get tested before they could do their next, their first scene, um, tested positive. Um, so that he hadn't even done any scenes at all. And so there was no, no transmission, but mm-hmm. so that's how the testing system works for those of you who want to know. Dante, thank you so much for coming on. It's been such a pleasure getting to know you. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. It was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah. <laughs> I hope you enjoy your Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0. Won't you think of me the next time you shave your balls? That's yeah, going to be the only thought in my head. Do <laughs> <laughs> you shave your face with this, do you think? I mean, I don't you see can, why not, yeah, right? yeah, you can. But and I mean, the whole idea is that it's like a separate thing for your genitals. But hey, man. It, you know what? I'm that is yours. <laughs> you can do whatever you want with it. It is my gift to you. And however you want to use the lawnmower 4.0 with proprietary skin safe technology. <laughs> Sorry. I've been, these guys have been like my longest running sponsors of the show. So I like, I know everything by heart and they're, they're awesome people. And I love that you can shave in the dark. You, you can know, shave I, in the dark yeah. and yes, in the shower. Do that. I didn't think about that. Yeah. I get crazy, man. You can <laughs> shave in the dark, in a dark shower. It's crazy. I do love taking showers in the dark. I'm not going to lie. Well, this is your new best friend. 
Um, can you tell everyone where they can find you online? Just uh, plug all your social media handles, anything else? Uh, so Twitter and Instagram are at hippie GQ underscore. Uh, and then my only fans is at Dante underscore Cole. Anything else? You just Google my name. Perfect. And you guys can find me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. If you want to support the show, as always, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall unfiltered, where you can watch interviews like this live as they are happening. Thank you so much for joining us. I will see you next week. Since I've started working with Manscaped, they've really expanded on their product line. It's incredible. And if you get their perfect package, you will not only get ball toner and ball deodorant, but you will also get, of course, the electric trimmer, a shed travel bag, and their boxer briefs, which are the most comfortable boxer briefs. You can get all of this for 20% off at manscaped.com by using my code HRU.